Hi there, all my crafty friends. I'm going to show you something spectacular that you can do with a simple mason jar or any glass bottle using Mod Podge paint and a few simple embellishments. Make sure you stick around to the end. This project turns out beautiful. So if you're ready, let's make a mess. The first thing I did was wipe this jar down with some alcohol. This removes any dirt, debris, or oil from being handled. I'm giving the jar one coat of a medium gray paint. I'll let that dry for about an hour, and then I'm going to give it a coat of some matte spray sealer. This is an important step, so don't leave it out. The matte sealer will prevent the paint from peeling. I have a video on the importance of this step. I'll leave a link for you in my description box below. I'll let the matte sealer dry for about an hour or so and then give the jar two more coats of paint. You won't need to seal between the other coats, but I did add one more coat of the matte sealer at the end to seal my jar. I intend to make this a soap dispenser, so I'm being very careful not to get any paint on the threads of the jar. I also taped it with painter's tape before spraying the matte sealer. While the sealer is drying, I'm going to work some magic on a few paper flowers. They won't look like paper by the time we're done with them. I'm temporarily gluing some star sticks on the bottom so I have a handle while working with them. Now all these little flowers are going to get a Mod Podge bath. I'm dunking them in the Mod Podge and using a brush to remove all the excess and pulling between all the petals. I stand them up in a cup to dry. Where are you watching from? Let me know in the comments. It's fun to see what cities and countries you're all watching from. I'm filming from Las Vegas, Nevada in the United States. Once the Mod Podge dries, the paper is sealed and slightly stiff. Now you can paint them or decorate them any way that makes you happy. Pour your Mod Podge into a special bowl. The dark colors will bleed and ruin your decoupage glue. Some of the green got onto my white roses, but I'm going to paint them so I don't mind. If you want them to stay white, be careful. These will need to dry overnight. I did the large flowers a little differently. I separated the petals and then sprayed them with a gloss spray sealer. I made sure to get between the petals. Be careful not to spray the sealer on too thick or it will make the paper look translucent. Give it two lighter coats. This pre-stiffens them a little bit. You can't dunk these. The large petals collapse under the weight of the Mod Podge. After the spray sealer dried in about 30 minutes, I painted each petal top and bottom with the Mod Podge. If you're enjoying and finding some value in this video, please hit that like button for me. Doing so helps my channel to grow and sends this video to more people out there. That way I can continue to bring you awesome tutorials. Thanks for doing that. All the products and tools I use in this video will be listed below in my description box. Each one has a blue link to make it easy for you to find them. They still try to collapse a little bit, so I hang them upside down to dry. These will need to dry overnight as well. Now that the Mod Podge is dry, it's time to give these little flowers a facelift. I couldn't find the light blue paint I was looking for, so I just mixed up my own color. I started with a light blue and just added some white. I'm painting the roses and the tiny blue flowers top and bottom and in between. After the paint dried in about an hour, I gave each flower a coat of satin varnish to prepare it for antiquing. I let the varnish dry for about an hour and now it's time to give the flowers a little life now. I'm going to add some antiquing in a dark blue which will add some depth to the flowers. I'm mixing the dark blue paint with some water to make it runny. I'll brush that on and then wipe it off right away. 
it will stay in all the cracks and crevices, adding a beautiful effect. I'll be able to wipe some of it off because of the varnish. It prevents the antiquing from grabbing onto the paint. I'm working on some great projects for the upcoming weeks. I'll be doing some decoupage, more 3D air dry clay, and mason jar decorating. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any of them. If you'd like to be notified anytime I upload a new video, click that bell. I'm going to add some beautiful white frost metallic luster rub to the edges of the flowers. My rub is a little dried out, so I'm spraying it with a little bit of water. I'm going to gently rub it just on the edges of the flower petals. It highlights them and gives them such a beautiful pearly effect. Send me a comment and let me know what type of project you would like to see next. Decoupage, mixed media canvases, or more mason jar decorating. Your suggestion could be my very next video. I love hearing from all of you and look forward to reading all your comments. The rub didn't put enough pearl look in the center of the flowers, so I'm using a little bit of pearl white paint in the centers of all the flowers. Now I'll give them all a coat of satin varnish again to protect everything I just did. The large white flower looks a little boring, so I'm going to jazz it up a little bit. These are called diamond dots, and they are for diamond painting. I'm going to give them a whole new purpose. I'm putting some clear glossy varnish in the center of the large flower and then pouring the dots on the varnish. I'm using gloss varnish because the dots are shiny too. The dots are Aurora Borealis, which is a rainbow rhinestone on one side and silver on the other. It's just so pretty. I use these a lot in my projects. The varnish is on pretty thick, so I'm going to let this dry overnight. Time to put everything together now. I'm gluing the large white flower center front and one of the blue roses. Now I'll add all the pearls around them. These pearls are beautiful. You can get them at any of the hobby stores and also on Amazon. They have a sticky back, but I add a few drops of hot glue to make sure they stay put. I cut them into smaller pieces and place them in various places on the jar. No real rhyme or reason, just wherever I think they look good. I cut the plastic backing off part of the applique and glue it down in smaller parts so it's easier to handle. They are little devils and like to fight you. After gluing the pearls, I placed the rest of the flowers and mingled them around with the pearls. I'm using a Shore Bonder cordless glue gun. I absolutely love this glue gun. It's so nice to work without fighting a cord that's in your way all the time. I have this listed in my favorite tools section in my description box. I made sure my placements on the jar were all very asymmetrical. In art and design, it's always more pleasing to the eye done in that manner. I'm assembling my soap dispenser lid for this beautiful jar. Then I'll add a twine bow around the top. Hard to believe it's a mason jar now, isn't it? I put together a playlist of some other tutorials you may enjoy. Click the picture on the right to be taken directly to that playlist. Thanks so much for watching and I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to subscribe by clicking my picture in the top right corner so you don't miss any future videos.